The Grade 1 Champion of Champions Handicapping Show with Quarter Horse Racing Guru Ed Burgard and StallionEsearch.com's Greg Thompson. Brought to you by the new sire, Eight Political Blood, standing at Robichaux Ranch Incorporated in Brobridge, Louisiana, and Burns Ranch in Menifee, California. Greg Thompson of StallionEsearch.com here with, of course, the, the voice of Quarter Horse Racing, Ed Burgard. Ed, of course, the two of us are commonly mentioned in, in quarter horse racing circles as the, the greatest minds in quarter horse racing. Of course, you know, not necessarily me, but I was talking in reference to you. Is that so? That is so. <laughs> I love it. Ed and I are here to talk about the Champion of Champions. Ed, of course, you see a lot of these horses go down the racetrack. A lot of these horses have seen uh, the racetrack with the exception of dashing. Uh, Dash and Brown Streak. Dash and Brown Streak. With that being said, let's kind of talk about some of the, obviously the two at the top are obvious choices. Uh, you got He's a Dash of Fire as well as Munis. Those are two obvious choices, but you know, it, it is worth talking about those two. Well, obviously He's a Dash of Fire. I made seven to five in the morning line, Munis eight to five, but everybody thinks it's a match race. I don't necessarily agree because He's a Dash of Fire is a three-year-old. He's never been 440 yards. All the potential in the world is there that tells me he's going to go 440. And Munis has only won 20 out of 28 starts. So there's a chance he could get beat. There but is a chance. I thought there were three or four other horses who could have outside uh, shots if those horses make a mistake. And that's kind of the, the focus of this segment here on Stallion Research. We want to talk about those horses outside of the obvious. So, uh, Ed, obviously I'd like to start with Varnieta. Or Niete, I'm saying right this time. Uh, this horse, you know, he's, he's kind of a horse that really has kind of had the tussle with Moonist as many times as just about anybody on the racetrack and, and it actually has been successful as I talked with the trainer this morning Hernandez he he knows how to beat this horse he sure does we go back to the vessel's maturity even though Moonist had trouble in that race I don't think he could have beaten Farniente that day as good as Farniente ran Farniente's final eighth because we have those electronically timed was 9.34 and that's the fastest final eighth of the year so Farniente runs back to the vessel's maturity he could easily win this race. Another horse that I would like to also mention is Quirky. Quirky's probably, as mentioned before, it, it's probably one of the greatest quarter horse females in, in the world at present. And of course, stepping up and go running against the boys here in the Champion of Champions. What are your thoughts? Well, she won the Southern California Derby and beat the boys last year, but that was kind of a suspect grade one field, in my opinion. It wasn't that strong a group. She's coming in off four consecutive wins against her own sex. I think she's just a notch below these, and she's got a great closing surge, but I take a look at her numbers. They just don't match up to me that Munis and He's a Dash of Fire has, but she definitely has a chance. Another horse that you see that, that has an outside chance, Ed? Rock is the horse I picked third in the race. Really? I loved his trial win in the Z Wayne Griffin Director's Trial. I watched the tape about five times this morning, and Jimmy Dean Brooks, the final 16th, was like this. Right. And I talked to Jaime Gomez, who has been training the horse for Eddie Willis out here, and Jaime says since the horse's last outing, he's put on quite a bit of weight, which is a good sign that the horse is getting better and better. He had a little trouble in the uh, race before that when he finished fourth in the Los Al Championship. So he's a horse you might want to watch at a prize. He won the All-American Gold Cup. You know he can get 440 yards. I was actually at the All-American Gold Cup. I actually think that race is a little suspect in my opinion. I, 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 I thought that really didn't have a great field to beat as well as that also moves me over to Dashing Brown Street. Uh, at the time when he won the Remington Invitational, I thought potentially one of the, the top older horses in the country, you know, obviously knocking heads with Munis, but i sp spoken with several handicappers since then. They also call that race suspect as well. Well, you take a look at his uh, Trackmaster speed figure in that race, and uh, they only gave him a 99, which is a pretty low number when he won the Remington Park Championship. Ran poorly down the refrigerator handicap, but they, he worked between races here two weeks ago under the lights. looked terrific to me. Were you looking down when he worked down that says that's kind of your the perspective? Yeah, because I actually called the workout. I mean, it was, it was not from the gate, but you could just tell the way Cody Jensen worked him for G.R. Carter, who wasn't here. And Cody had a really tight hold, and the horse was just gliding over the track. So I don't think the track's going to be any problem for him, but I'm like you. I don't know how good the competition is that's been behind him before. Okay, Ed, now I'm going to ask you to, to narrow it down to one. I give you a, a pot full of money and say go to the windows. Who are you going with? Man, that's a tough question. I mean, I picked he's a dash of fire to win. I just think he's the best horse, but he's never been tested against this type of class yet. Jose Flores, when he drew post positions, told me ahead of time that he had the third selection and John Cooper had the fourth selection. And Cooper was going to go right next to Moon. I was going to go right next to He's a Dash of Fire. And for Jose, he got lucky because the first two selections took the eight and nine post. Jose did not want to be next to Munis for some reason, so he took number postman number 10 because he said Munis tends to shift out sometimes. So Jose is real happy with his post position drawn. Cruz Mendez, our best rider here, is aboard. 
Fantastic. Well, this is Greg Thompson of StallionEsearch.com with Los Alamitos' is Ed Burgart here re looking forward to the Champion of Champions this week. The next top sire has arrived. A champion's bloodline. Standing at Robichaux Ranch in Brobridge, Louisiana. Over one and a half million in earnings. A political blood.